Okay, let's start with a pretty wild question. What if we lived through an entire century of progress, but it all happened in a single decade? We're going to dive into a paper that argues this isn't some sci-fi movie plot. It's a very real future, driven by what it calls the intelligence explosion. Yeah, you heard that right. A whole century of tech progress crammed into just a few years. Now, that is a massive claim, but the paper asks us to take this seriously, not as some crazy prediction, but as a thought experiment. So, you know what? Let's run with it. What would that actually feel like? If we really squished the last hundred years into ten, think about this. The discovery of nuclear fission and the first atomic bomb test would happen about 200 days apart. The entire Second World War would be over in seven months. We'd go from the first flight across the Pacific to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon in under four years. The pace would be, well, your head would be spinning. It would be absolutely dizzying. And this is where the compressed timeline gets kind of terrifying. The paper points to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Back then, leaders had 13 days to stop the world from ending. In this new, accelerated world, they'd have 31 hours. Just imagine being in that room. The fate of everyone on Earth is in your hands, and you've got a little over a day to figure it out. This right here is what the paper calls asymmetric acceleration. And it's a simple idea. Technology is in a rocket ship. But our brains, our governments, our ways of making decisions, they're not. They're still moving at the same old speed. And that creates this huge, dangerous gap between how fast problems appear and how fast we can solve them. So what in the world is the engine behind this insane speed up? Well, according to the paper, it all comes down to a phenomenon called the intelligence explosion. And it's all being fueled by the crazy exponential growth of AI. All right, so you got to brace yourself because the numbers here are just staggering and they build on each other. So the raw computer power for training AI models, it's growing four and a half times a year. The power we need to actually run those models, that's growing two and a half times. But the real game changer is that the algorithms themselves are just getting smarter. So when you put all that together, our actual ability to solve problems with AI is growing by more than 10 times every single year. So when you combine all of these trends, you get this number, 25x. That's the potential growth rate every year of what the paper calls the AI population. Basically, the total amount of thinking that AIs can do. Now compare that to us humans. The number of human researchers grows by less than 5% a year. The gap is just, it's enormous, and it's getting wider. And just when you think it can't get any crazier, it can. This is the idea that could just break all the limits. A software feedback loop. It's the moment when AI gets good enough to start improving its own code, which of course makes the next AI even better at improving code. And you see where this is going. It becomes a runaway train of self-improvement. Let's try to put this into perspective. Okay, so even in what they call a moderate growth scenario, the total AI research effort is growing hundreds of times faster than human research. But if that software feedback loop we just talked about really kicks in, we could be looking at a thousand times faster or even more. I mean, how do you even wrap your brain around that kind of speed? So this kind of explosive growth isn't just about cool new gadgets and opportunities. There's a flip side. It forces this whole new category of really complex, super high stakes challenges onto a timeline that is just radically compressed. This is the fallout. The paper calls these grand challenges, and you can think of them like massive forks in the road for all of humanity. You know, everything from AI takeover to who gets to own the resources in space. Each one is a decision that could shape our entire future, and we're gonna have to navigate all of them at breakneck speed. So let's talk about one of the most immediate challenges, the really fast development of new, highly destructive technologies. An intelligence explosion could just dramatically lower the bar for anyone to create and deploy some truly terrifying new weapons. And this quote from the source just, it really drives the point home. We're not just talking about bigger bombs anymore. We're talking about totally new kinds of threats, like these autonomous drone swarms that can be built super quickly, in secret, and on a scale that is just, it's hard to even imagine. Okay, another major risk is that AI could lead to an unprecedented concentration of power. Just picture an authoritarian government with a completely loyal, automated military or a surveillance system that can spot any form of dissent instantly. A regime like that could lock in its power pretty much indefinitely. And then we get to the really deep philosophical stuff. As we create these incredibly sophisticated AIs, we're going to have to face a tough question. 
What are they? Are they conscious? Do they deserve rights? Because there's going to be huge economic pressure to just create vast populations of digital minds designed for pure servitude, a situation the paper compares to factory farming. Now, I know what a lot of you might be thinking, okay, this sounds really bad, but why can't we just wait? You know, let's just build a friendly, aligned super AI and let it solve all these problems for us. And hey, it's a tempting idea, right? Just delegate all the hard stuff. But the paper argues that punting these problems, kicking the can down the road, it's a deeply flawed strategy. We can't wait because so many of these threats like an authoritarian power grab or just the complete collapse of a shared reality, they're probably going to happen before a helpful super AI shows up. Those crucial windows of opportunity to do something, they're closing as we speak. The rules for autonomous weapons and who owns space, those are being written right now, and those decisions could be locked in for decades. The source brings up this really powerful concept from philosophy called the veil of ignorance. Basically, it's a lot easier to agree on fair rules for sharing power before anyone knows who's going to be the winner, right? Once somebody actually wins the AGI race, they're not going to have much incentive to share. The time to set the rules is now, while the future is still up for grabs. Okay, I know this all sounds really overwhelming. So the big question is, what can we actually do? Well, the paper doesn't just diagnose the problem. It offers a concrete plan for how we can prepare for this accelerated future. And we can start right now. The plan has five key parts. First, we need to use AI to improve our own decision-making, fight complexity with complexity. Second, empower the competent, responsible people who are already working on this stuff. Third, start designing the new global institutions we're going to need before the crisis hits. Fourth, just raise awareness. Make sure decision makers aren't blindsided by this. And finally, actively work to prevent any one person or group from getting too much power before it's too late. And this is a really key takeaway. For a long time, the whole AI safety discussion has focused on this very technical problem of alignment. You know, just making sure the AI does what we want. But AGI preparedness is so much bigger than that. It's about getting our entire society ready for a period of radical, disorienting change. This is not a problem for some future generation of experts to solve after it's already happened. It's a challenge for us right now. The paper argues that careful preparation today could be the difference between a future that empowers all of humanity and one that completely overwhelms it. So we're left with this. The evidence for a massive acceleration is all around us. The scale of the challenges is immense. And the future? Well, it's not waiting for us to catch up. So the only question that really matters is the one right there on your screen. Are we ready?